All right, physics students, let's talk about angular momentum in one final way. So I've got here a pivot video of a stick balanced on the end of a platform. The center of mass of that stick has been marked with the white line, and we're going to uh, shoot a marble at it. So I'm hit play. Bam! And it flies off. So let's watch that again. Hit play. Bam! So the, uh, and that's the noise it makes. Bam! When that marble hits the stick, how can we think about the marble imparting linear momentum in the form of a rotational quantity? So the weird thing is that if you pick a point in space, like the, say, the center of mass of that stick right here, if we use that white, the, there's a little black dot there in the middle of that white line. If we make that our reference point, we can actually describe that the linear momentum of that marble as an angular momentum. So we can say that relative to some stationary point out in space, this moving object actually has angular momentum, and I want to talk about that. So if I can get my stuff open. So here, here's a little sort of cartoony version of it. There's the stick. There's the center of mass, which we're going to call this um, C, C, the center of mass. And we are interested in how, let's use the highlighter here. We're interested in how the linear momentum of this marble is actually also an angular momentum relative to this purple line that I've drawn. There's also a purple line there. That's the actual motion of the marble. So notice that that distance between those two purple lines, that's a constant. OK, so this distance over here that I've marked with the black arrow, that's actually uh, not going to change as the marble flies. That's actually very important to what I'm about to describe. So um, let's use a different color here. Let's use red and let's describe if I can do this. This is a hard arrow to draw. That'll work. Oh, wow. So bad. So let's let's do this guy as R1, and then the uh, momentum over here, P1, is m times v, which neither one of those things are constant, or uh, neither one of those are changing. So the momentum P1 is a constant, okay? And so we can describe the angular momentum as R1 crossed with P1, which is the length of R1 times the length of P1 times sine of the angle between them. So that's this angle right here. So if we kind of sketch this in, that's that distance that we marked out in purple. That's R1 times sine of theta. That's the, the value that's not changing. Well, what if we pick another point? Let's do a purple and we'll pick, well, I've already got purple in there, I guess. Let's do um what? Blue blue. I've got this point there, and I've got a different vector. Well, it's uh, hypotenuse there. Sorry. It's far side. If this is theta, that's still R2 times sine of theta, and the momentum is still not going to change. So we could actually write the angular momentum as R sine of theta, the component of R that's uh, up and down, times the momentum. Instead of writing it as r p sine of theta we could think of this as the the distance between those two purple lines the momentum's not changing this guy's a constant and for any given point um sine of theta might be changing but so would r so r sine of theta that's also a constant r is getting shorter sine of theta is and you'll notice that we start with a an angle that's you know, closer to zero and between the red and the blue, it got bigger. So R times sine of theta may be a constant, but R is getting smaller as sine of theta or theta as theta is getting bigger. So the product of those two is a constant. So that means the angular momentum is the constant value R times sine of theta times P, and it's not going to change. So that means that angular momentum is also a constant. So as long as you've got a stationary point in space, this point C, then an object moving above it like this is going to have an angular momentum, but that angular momentum is actually a constant value. And it can actually help us explain. We, we would need to get more into the details, but we could actually describe how marble striking the top of the uh, stick causing a net torque on the system and that change, remember that, um, 
that uh, the change in angular momentum as a function of time is the same as the the uh, torques, right? Or no? Yeah, that's right. And it's also that's kind of similar to uh, d momentum dt equals force. So we could also think about the force applied by the marble on the stick too, and uh, relate those two quantities. Don't forget that torque and force are also related. Torque is equal to r. Cro oops cross f and that's we could think about that r as the r sine theta so you could actually interrelate torque the radius the angular momentum the force and uh, linear momentum all of those quantities actually end up being related to one another um so don't the, the main point of this the biggest takeaway is that the the uh, angular momentum of an object moving in a straight line relative to a stationary point in space isn't zero but it is constant so it's kind of a strange thing, but it's sort of our last big topic. All right, we're done.